I perfectly synced at Angie's. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Man Cave Movie Night. That's right, Man Cave Movie Night. Oh. Boy Cave Movie Night. <laughs> Guy Cave Movie Night. There's bro so many cave different types of guys and bros and dudes. True. Wouldn't you say? Oh, yes. So many. And I love where this is going. A lot of different <laughs> categories. And we're going to play a little game to start us out. That's basically, nice. I'm going to read you a little... A little tiny description. You guess what kind of guy that is. Great. And these are colloquy, colloquy, colloquial phrases. Yeah, yeah. That uh, <laughs> you've probably heard before. Great. And so, uh, are we all buzzing in? <laughs> um, are we sure? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's buzz in. Okay. Let's buzz in. Okay. Let's buzz in. Okay. Bazinga. Bazinga. Maybe no. Maybe we'll do a bazinga. A bazing in. Let's do a bazing off. <laughs> Buzzing um, in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, should we go? I don't know. What's better? Let's go. Everything buzz in. is yeah, better. Let's do buzz in. Let's, do okay. let's buzz in. These types of guys are fearless trailblazers who love to be in control. Alphas. Sigmas. Do I have to say something before I guess? Uh, you got to say bazinga. You got to say bazinga. Bazinga. <laughs> Alphas slash sigmas. This is, I'll give it to you, the alpha male. Alpha Ooh. male. Yeah, you gotta but say remember, the kind of guy. You gotta sorry, say sorry, the whole sorry. phrase. Yep, yeah, right. we'll give male. you. We'll give you the point on that one though. Okay, I like that. So let's go over to our next one. This one, this type of guy is often rebellious and may have a tendency to break rules. Bazinga, bad boy. This is a bad nice. boy. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> very, very nice. This next guy coming into you is that shouldn't have said that. Is exactly the type of guy your mom has always envisioned for you, and who you, Buzzing despite guy. your best efforts, view more as a friend. Nice guy. It's the nice oh, guy. Nice. Very. <laughs> Sorry, good. I I. Starting now, I want to impose this own rule for myself and for you, Lucas. Let's wait to Buzzinga until, until it's the done. whole prompt is yeah. done. Until I it's apologize. Done. That's, I got that's excited. Good. Uh, our next guy... Sucks. <laughs> it does suck. <laughs> this guy seems really awesome, but then you realize he's 26 and his job is in his friend's garage. Hmm. Hmm. Trying to think of a of a man or boy or guy or dude. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a guess. I don't think it is this. But Say buzzing okay. buzzing a the forgot it. Great. The super wow. the Great podcasting. the uh, oh. the oh. the the unemployed bro. Famous. You know, it oh. could be that, but there's. That's not exactly what we're going for. Know, is term. there a specific I term? Don't, I just don't not know. really. This one's pretty. It's pretty loose. <laughs> this is pretty just loose. <laughs> I was <laughs> gonna say. So there's kind of the trend um, uh-huh. of like the memes buzzinga. There's yeah. the trend of the memes that are like that unemployed homie at 4 a.m. You know, and it's yeah. like the oh, sure. or like 2 p.m. or whatever, and it's like him at a waterfall or something. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's I'll, not I'll, the unemployed homie. <laughs> it's not the unemployed homie. I'll give you guys a little hint. Um, he technically has a job, and he considers this to be his job. Oh, 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 Bazinga. Uh, Discord mod. <laughs> oh, <nice. laughs> That's great. I think we'll even give you a little half point on that. Okay. But what we were going for is the guy in a band. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. All right, great. Um, okay, let's go to our next one. When he has band practice and this... has to make breakfast both in the same day. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's too much for him. Um, this is this kind of guy is respons- a responsible companion who you want by your side. Hmm. Buzzing a wingman. That is a great, That's great good. guess. I feel like it's more of a like a romantic type partner. 
<laughs> Excuse me. I coughed and I didn't mute the mic. That's bad podcasting. <laughs> bad podcast. Um, say the prompt one more time. I think I'm, I got it on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, this is a, uh, let's see, uh, a People guy are who's... screaming at us right now, by the way, for not knowing this. <laughs> I don't know about this one, actually. This one's new a new phrase for me. Okay. Um, it's a responsible companion who you want by your side. I'll give Lucas a half point because Wingman is not on this list, but that's a great Wingman type of should, man. Yeah, that's he good. is a great type um, of man. Someone responsible that you want by your side. Uh... Uh, Buzzinga. Buzzinga. No, oh, Niall, no, first. Go. Oh, go. Yeah, Niall, go. An established gentleman. <laughs> no, <Okay>. no. Lucas, <laughs> do you have one? Uh, your best man, perhaps? Also a great one. Good and guess. In fact, if I came up with a list, those two would definitely be on it. Instead, I typed into Google different types of boys. <laughs> 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 this is a Dale. A delta male. We had alpha oh, male. Delta male. male. Now we have delta male. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, we're getting into term. we're getting into incel terminology. <laughs> we, I think are. Um, so check, check the writer profile of this and just like click on it. <laughs> well, yeah. this is from varied sources. You know when oh, you type into Google yeah, and it just oh, says like gotcha. from the web. And it I was going to say that drop-downs. was definitely posted by like women wronged me sixty nine. <laughs> On nine gag or whatever. Gray head profile whatever picture. They use. <laughs> what do incels use? Nine gag? Tumblr? Four uh, chan. Four chan. That's what it is. <laughs> Amazing, but not us. We use uh, Reddit, Spotify for podcasters. <laughs> and all right, here's our our next one. This will be our last one, I think. Cool. Okay. Because we're really skimming what Google has to offer. <laughs> Bottom of the barrel, right? Now. <laughs> hey, at least we know we're These... all Delta males. That's right. We're companions you want by your side. Golden Retriever energy, baby, all the way. Hey, um, these guys are one-of-a-kind progressives. Uh, they're the least talked about personality type in pop culture. But they're rare nonconformists. I guess that's how I'll say that. Hmm. The, hmm. So Is maybe this that's a phrase why... that's going to sound familiar to me? Or is this no, another bottom of the barrel one? No, but it's similar to the last one. It's, it's a type of buzzing something. Buzzing Is it a beta yeah. male? It's not a beta male. <gasps> is it a is it a man bun male? It's not Bazinga. a man Buzz- bun male. Yeah, please bazinga <laughs> before you bazing. <laughs> Sorry. And answer in the form of a bazinga. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. All right. It's uh very close to beta male. Uh, what does C uh, stand for in the Greek alphabet? Chi Not male. C. <laughs> e Delta epsilon e male? Epsilon male. It's, it's a Z. Zeta, zeta male. male. <laughs> Bazinga Zeta male. <laughs> no, Bazinga. Yeah, that's two points for Niall because uh, everyone, everyone was struggling. Note, <laughs> for saying out loud Bazinga Zeta male... <laughs> I feel like less of a person than I than I was before I said that. Oh, okay. Well, let's see. I want to look into this a little bit more. Uh, there are five male personality types, apparently. There's the alpha male, the beta male, omega male, oh, let's gamma go. male, wow. and delta male. Gamma male. That's so zeta male. Hulk. Yeah. That's, that's is true. that why Sigma male yeah, is the rarest Yeah, it says Gamma male. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's not it's even not on men's XP. There's com. another one that they didn't talk about, which is INFJ. That's it. Is, oh, yeah. <laughs> is that what you want? Uh, I don't know. Uh... That's the one that I can think of. Well, I'm an ENFJ, and you're listening to Man Cave Movie Night. <laughs> Hit the theme song. <laughs> And welcome back to Man Cave Movie Night. Hello. Full we learned men. that we're all a bunch of gamma? Delta? What do we say? Zeta Delta males? Delta ma- oh, Delta we're males. We're Delta, Delta males. males, yeah. Because we're your weekly Monday companions you want by your side. Yes. Um, 
but the real question. But ladies don't ever go for us. They go for alphas. They, they go, go for, for Zeta alphas. males. <laughs> oh, and Sigma. Oh, Zeta males are so. They don't con- conform to society and they're just. Ugh. They're so uh, unpopular, and Men XP doesn't talk about them. They should get Ugh. into bone smashing and change their facial structure to be more attractive. <laughs> yeah. That's Which that's is a I thing that I learned about this week from a Curtis Connor video. Mm. People do that? People break the bones in their face on purpose to so that they'll heal back in a different structure and look better, I guess. Psychotic I think I should do that behavior. for my nose. Fine. Yeah. I, I don't think that it. would Just help it. Smoke it up yeah, but maybe face. when they uh maybe when they do some surgery it would uh Oh, you're going for the surgery. Oh. Well, yeah, I'd go for a little surgery because I've got that deviated septum. Well, also so if, I you go, sound like this. if you Get go bad enough. Rhinoplasty. You can just have the Owen Wilson thing. Like, it, it can become oh, a significant oh, where feature it's just like, that people recognize yeah. you by. Yeah, it's like a Z. Yeah. Or it, Zeta. Yeah, get oh, it so oh, bad maybe. that it's good. Yeah, yeah Owen go. Wilson is a Zeta male. Well, this is a question. Is. <laughs> They're the nonconformists, Nile. Oh, yeah, dude. He's a skater. Everybody look up That's Owen right. Wilson skater. It's real. That, yeah, that video is awesome. Um, awesome. Guys. We're a bunch of different types of males. We're Worst best men. men. We're we're wingmen. We're others. Lucas is but a finance bro. <laughs> he's a finance bro. But the question is, are we film bros? Mm. We have a film podcast. Is that enough to it's a huge identify step. us? <laughs> it, it definitely is. We've we're taken a way, very certainly. large step that many other film bros have not taken. However, maybe that takes us out of the circle of film bro, because I think a defining characteristic of film bro is someone who talks about how he should have a film pro- podcast. Yeah, but that doesn't. He's got his friends and he's like, dude, we should have a podcast. Yeah. Which that, was us for a little true. while, but we pulled the trigger and here we it was are. Pretty, here we are. It was pretty short later. in between us deciding we should have a podcast and then us actually having a podcast. Yeah. Um, there's... I think a big difference between like film bros and, and bros who like film, guys who like film. It's like this definition of band kid yeah, and a kid in band. Totally. I would say, I don't know, Lucas, were you a band kid? Or I was not. Kid I band? was a kid in band. And boy, did I hate the band kids. <laughs> yeah, well, why wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Everyone else I'd... did too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. I'd say like Niall and I did theater, but we weren't theater kids totally yeah fortunately like, most of the people in our theater group were not were. theater kids we lucked out yeah we, we had, had a couple nice. we, we had got a, couple. a lucky oh absolutely <laughs> we had a couple <laughs> yeah the, the kids i was the in drum line of... with were not band kids but when you have such a huge sample size of like 300 people dudes. in the entire band there's gonna yeah. be a fair oh, amount one million percent Totally. Um, yeah, we weren't singing "Defying Gravity" in the hallways. Yes, in between yeah. classes. Totally. Or Lunch just whistling tables. it because they don't actually know the words; they just know the tune yeah. because it was part of our show one year. Which I think is important to note that, in my brain at least, I think we should start off by kind of defining a film bro. In my mind, a film bro almost implies someone who actually kind of doesn't know that much about film but thinks that it it makes them more interesting to know a lot. Yeah. So it's the kind of guy who the word cinephile is in their everyday online vernacular. <laughs> Not necessarily in person, but they just like in their Instagram bio, it says like adventurer, skier, cinephile. Yeah. That's oh, a film. bro. Sure. Right yeah. Totally. yeah. Uh, yeah, someone who always brings up the cinematography of a movie. Uh, uh, yeah. Dude, yeah. yeah, it, lo- it was shot really <laughs> well, <laughs> but I hate yeah. saying cinematography yeah. because it makes me just, it, it, makes, it kind of gives me an ick yeah. a little bit. Yep, totally. I, I'll give you, oh, you go. Well, I was just going to say, I've me. noticed a lot of film bros sometimes will not like movies very much, which I find hilarious. <laughs> yep. um, for example, the current world record holder, for most movies watched in a single year, I think 10 years in a row, has his he uses Letterboxd very actively, partially to keep mm-hmm. track of that. I think he has something like 45,000 total movies logged, which is Gosh. just an unreal amount. 
Let me pull up his profile because I want to. I want to give you. Okay, here he is. His name is Punk P U N Q on Letterbox. If you're interested in following him, he has thirty six thousand four hundred ninety six movies. His Sheesh. average <laughs> is his highest peak, like on the letter on the rating scale, yeah. is one and a half stars. What? He has eight point eight thousand movies. He has rated one and a half stars. It's like, dog, guess do how you many even five like stars? Doing what no. you're doing? No, he doesn't. How many five stars, Lucas? It is twenty nine five stars. Out of thirty six thousand. <laughs> Out of thirty six. Well, and we a half gotta thousand. hear. We gotta hear some examples. Yeah, what are they? Yeah, Can we? Because so this this is a good list. Yeah, I guess, by someone who's seen every idea. movie ever. These are the twenty nine <laughs> ones that are. These are the only twenty nine that are good. So, yeah, you guys, if you're listening right now, <laughs> go ahead and take some notes and then go watch those movies. You don't have to see any more. Yep. All right, That's here we the go. Cream of the I'll, crop. I'll list them off quick. <laughs> Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, Citizen Kane, It's a Wonderful Life, Wizard of Oz, Sunset Boulevard, Goonies, Metropolis, Snow White, and the Seven Dwarves, M, uh, Pinocchio, animated, Gone with the Wind, Passion of Joan of the Ark, uh, The Great Dictator, Battleship Potemkin, King Kong, Loss of Oliviandos, Safety Last, The Birth of a Nation, which is crazy to have that as That's five stars, <laughs> Intolerance, The Last Laugh, Greed, uh, Dark Passage, The Scarlet Empress, Pygmalion, the Jan- uh, Emil Jannings, The Last Commander, Jacuse, The Cat and the Canary, Ben-Hur, and this last Sheesh. one, which is The Cabinet of Dr. Cagli- Caligari. Caligari. So okay, those are the so only twenty nine good movies. <laughs> um, I wild like that is adds there. to something that I wanted to <laughs> propose though. Oh, this is Ben Hur, a is... tale of the Christ, not even OG Ben Hur. Oh no, interesting. That is OG Ben Hur. That's Ben-Hur, OG. I guess, is okay. a remake. Lucas, I want to ask you something because I think this fuels my next point that I was going to bring up. How many of those movies came out after the year two thousand? Uh, like I think one. Okay. I think it was just <laughs> two towers. Two towers, yeah. Great, because I think that um, film bros love to say nineteen whatever for the name for when they talk about a movie. Yeah, they like the feeling of talking about a movie that came out before they were born. Also, very few film bros that are older than nineteen twenty eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Like we'll say thirty. So, but yeah. They like to talk about the nineteen hundreds and it makes them feel smart to only like movies that are old. Well um, old, they'll be like nineties and eighties and seventies. Yeah, yeah. 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 But they like it's the kind of guys that when movies get nominated like, it's the kind of guy that's probably pissed that Barbie got nominated for Best Picture. Yeah, yeah, totally. Not because it's not anything because of, like, the feminist-related stuff. He's going to say just stuff like, oh, it was just kind of a cash-grabby type movie. Yeah. It made too <laughs> much money. Yeah, yeah, it made too much well, money to be good. <laughs> I think I think there's that definition of a film, bro. But there's also the kind of guy who has such a superficial level mm-hmm. of of movie knowledge that when they do see a really good one, like Inception, it's like that is their personality. Yeah. No other movie is good because it's not Christopher Nolan. Yeah, you know, there's the, there's the it's not some. Bros. There's like the kind of film bro that's like, oh yeah, this random Japanese director you've never heard of. They're yeah. the best. Or Cinematography some died. German the day the director. Cameras were invented. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or there's I. This is the Urban Dictionary top definition. I'll give you that. Nice. Let's hear it. <laughs> It says, person who views themselves as a huge film nerd while having mostly surface-level knowledge nice. of movies. <laughs> Their favorite movies include such underrated gems as The Dark Knight, the Dark Knight Pulp <laughs> Fiction, Inception, and Jurassic Park. Yeah, that's they also great. adore the MCU, which I don't know if that's entirely true. It, it's it was it's, a few yeah, years again, ago. It's but it's one yeah. or the other. Yeah, right? I would say, yeah, yeah totally. Um, um, that's so funny. Lo- that's it, and then the quote is, Logan should have been nominated for Best Picture <laughs> Film, bro. <laughs> that's great. They got nominated for so, Best Adapted Screenplay, so that's something. I bet mean, they go. wouldn't know that, though, because their level, no way. No. their knowledge is yeah. very service level. Yeah, so I, it's kind of that frat boy energy. Yeah. Totally. It, you know, very much like, oh, yeah, like, no, just this, the cinematography. Christopher Nolan just really does, like, something 
just way different. And he there, he actually writes his own stuff too. Like he actually writes and directs it. So yeah. I don't know if you actually knew that. They're you know, the kind he doesn't of guy, use CGI. Yeah, it's all visual. <laughs> yeah. The, they're the kind of guy who you have heard say out loud multiple times with this intonation. You haven't seen Interstellar? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they react very negatively when you say a movie, a very famous movie that they love, and I probably love too, like a Christopher Nolan movie or a Lord sure. of the Rings or a Star Wars, where it's like, you haven't yeah. seen it? It's so I, culturally relevant. And people are like, some people, I have a friend of mine who hasn't seen any Star Wars movie, and he's like, I don't want to, just so I can see people's reactions when I tell them <laughs> truthfully, I have not seen a single Star Wars oh, movie. Okay. Yeah, And I just want to say, I hope that this isn't out of line. I hope that you two agree with me. But it's the official Man Cave Movie Night opinion that oh. it's okay if you haven't seen a movie. Yes. It's yeah, actually well, maybe a good thing well, because it uh, means what? you get to watch that movie. And that's true. Yeah, that's true. And if you don't watch that movie, yeah. that's fine. But I know a lot of people that like, for example, Avatar The Last Airbender. I had a friend <clears throat> a couple of years ago. Who was like, yeah, I haven't watched it, and I don't like bringing it up because people get mad at me. Yeah. And I'm like, no, that's a great <laughs> opportunity. Like, yeah. if you meet someone that hasn't seen it, that you're friends with, it's like, let's watch it together. Because for me, the closest that I can get to feeling like I'm watching something for the first time is watching it with someone who's watching it for the first time. Totally. It's a great feeling for me. So, yeah. we support you if you haven't seen things. It's yeah. okay to not have seen Interstellar. But we'd love to watch it with you. But we would love to watch it with you. And if you don't watch it, by the time sure. you die, you're kind of an idiot. But that's... <laughs> but you should, yeah. <laughs> You've been warned. You've been warned. <laughs> yeah. The, You've been warned. We're not going to freak out at you, but we will tell you what lies ahead. The, yeah. the funny thing about guys like Christopher Nolan and Paul Thomas Anderson and some of these directors that film bros will kind of attach themselves to is, in real life, they're pretty chill. Like... Christopher Nolan just did a interview, like a panel with Nathan Fielder and Benny Safdie for The Curse. Oh, nice. And so, and he was just talking about how much he loves the rehearsal and Nathan for you. And it's like, sick. You know, he cast Benny Safdie in Oppenheimer, which means he's probably seen his movies and stuff too, which are kind of out there. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, he he's an active consumer of media, and he's all the interviews and interactions I've seen with him. He seems just like a super down to earth guy who just, just also yeah. happens to make movies that are really good and kind of have a larger than life subject matter that people who, you know, kind of have a surface level understanding of maybe time travel or space can attach themselves to because it's like, wow, now I know so much thanks to Christopher Nolan and his two and a half hours of movie he gave me. So, yeah. and that's yeah. not to downplay like Christopher Nolan is very insightful about the concepts that he writes and directs. Yeah. Like, it's it. You can be he has smart a perspective chill, that a lot like. of yeah. <laughs> he has a perspective that a lot of people you know don't have. He kind of can see, but like that's why he's one of the most famous directors. That doesn't necessarily mean that anytime he's not directing a movie, he's back at his apartment or not apartment giant home, uh, <laughs> pondering his orb. You know, yeah, like exactly. yeah, he yeah. talks to people and he lives a life. There was a Variety interview where he cited, or maybe not Variety, but something like that where he cited um, Talladega Nights as, like, one yeah, of his favorite movies. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, yeah, he's a person that watches movies and likes movies. He's probably the kind of dude that calls movies movies yep. and not films, mm -hmm. you know? He, he probably is more like <laughs> sure. Tarantino, where he has ones he calls movies and one he's, ones he calls film. Yeah. Although Tarantino, I think, is pinnacle film, bro. Tarantino's the, the, Tarantino's the guy that film bros want to be. Because Tarantino yep. legitimately has an unreal knowledge of film history. Like, yeah. you name any movie ever, he's seen it and he can name ten facts about it. There are videos yeah. of him that are just unbelievable how vast his knowledge is. And so I think people <laughs> will see that and be like, yeah, I'm Tarantino in terms of my knowledge. There's yeah. there's another guy on, um, on Letterboxd called Matt Lynch. I don't know if you guys have seen him. He has some reviews that are pretty popular sometimes just because he has so many followers. And his... Um, letterbox like profile is just video video store dirt bag and he has some sour opinions and they are just rough to read sometimes I follow him just out of the curiosity to see what he posts because he's like yeah. he's kind of thinking he because Quentin Tarantino got to start working in a video store and that's where he was discovered Harvey Keitel came in and 
kind of was pitched Reservoir Dogs by him and then attached himself to the project and that's how that got made. But um, with this guy, he's like, oh yeah, Video Store Dirtbag, just like Tarantino. Granted, he has a better knowledge than some of these film bro guys, but it's still kind of crazy that, you know, he's just accepting that and owning it. I guess props yeah. to him, but... Well, I think we're dodging the question. Yeah. <laughs> Are we film bro? Oh, I hope not. Like, like we said, we do have a podcast... Lucas is wearing a Godfather hat in Italian, in Italian, <laughs> in Italian and a niche uh, entertainment like movie sort of uh, podcast shirt on as well. Yeah, I bet I'm, they only printed like three of those. Yeah, that's a niche. <laughs> only three. Um, and in my background, I'm is, a we got we got hat. Raiders Legos, we got Simpsons, Star Wars. I, I literally have a film camera Lego and slate right here. Yeah, with which yeah, it looks good. It looks dweeb. good on frame. But you're a total dweeb because of it and a film bro. That's true. Um, I'm wearing a Seinfeld hat, which is one of the pinnacle, um, like film bro version of virtue signaling where yeah. it's like, Oh, I don't like friends. I like Seinfeld. Yeah. Which we did a whole episode about how yeah. we don't like friends and we like and Seinfeld. And we do like Seinfeld. <laughs> so like that kind friends. of is then something. Then we watched some episodes of Friends. We were, we were, yeah. watched some episodes we're all of, of friends yeah. and also didn't like it still, but <laughs> I, I thought it was fine. That was fine. I, but that, that was two years ago, and we're moving on to how we're film bros. Or are, Is it yeah. bad if that episode, I think I didn't admit this in the episode, but I'll admit it now. I listened to some of them in the car. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh, boy. That's what I did for ba- when I was watching um, How I Met Your Mother. That's basically what I did for like the last three seasons of that show. Because I was just so done with it, but I still wanted to finish it yeah. technically. Right. And so while I was delivering pizzas, I just had that playing instead of music. Yeah. Well, I've got a question that I think will help us determine if we're film bros. Let's hear it. Good. Yeah, Are this is my... a journey we're going on, I yeah, think, it is. in this episode. <laughs> by, the, by the end of this episode, we'll have an answer for you. We will. I hope. Um, I hope. <laughs> my question is, when someone asks you what your favorite movie is, what do you say? Note, this is a different question than, what is your favorite movie? The question is... When someone asks you what your favorite movie is, what do you say? I think there are kind of some <laughs> film bro ways to answer this question. Yeah. yeah. That maybe aren't the truth for that person. So I want to hear what we all have to say. <coughs> I will say my answer always used to be, I can't answer that question. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> which is um, a great film bro a, answer. Which yeah, is a pretty yeah. film bro answer. I would say there are just too many movies and I've seen too many movies and they're all so different that it's difficult to put one at the top, which I still kind of stand by that sentiment. However, yeah. I also have changed my answer to, and this is so stupid and I got to stop saying this, but I used to say that I didn't have an answer to that question and then I saw Hunt for the Wilder People and now my answer is Hunt for the Wilder People. <laughs> That's so fun. That's, All right. that's that, what creates I, a, I, that creates an instant connection for people. Like, oh, nice. That's fun. Yeah. That yeah. makes yeah. me seem sweet. To, me, <laughs> to you, mm-hmm. yeah. Is that I also your good. real answer? That is my... I, I think it... Huh? I honestly haven't had this conversation in a while, so I don't What's know if it's still now? my answer. Bro, that's too hard of a question to answer. <laughs> All people, whenever they're interviewed by Letterboxd on the red carpet. Oh, oh, yeah. oh my top, oh, 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 my top four, oh, not top okay. 500. Uh, oh. yeah. Okay. Um. <laughs> Kevin Feige is like the Marvels, whatever came out last. <laughs> the last four Marvel movies. The Marvels, Guardians 3, uh, Ant-Man 3, and... Um, I- <laughs> I'm Space Timothy Odyssey. Chalamet, and my favorites are Wonka and Dune 2. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think this is a... I think I have kind of a rotating top list that kind of like Studio Ghibli, where my answer is basically whichever one I saw last is the one that I say is my favorite. Yeah. Um, and I yeah. think that that kind of happens with the rotating of, like, Hunt for the Wilder People, Whiplash... Um, Midnight in Paris, uh, probably, I don't know, maybe Moonrise Kingdom. Bazinga, D- just a young kind Sheldon of like, story. Uh, yeah, Young Sheldon the film. Um, yeah. But yeah, just, uh, I <laughs> think that Young Sheldon it, season four. 
Every time I watch it, it's just in one take, one it's sitting. It's like so a, it's it might as well a movie. A, a movie. <laughs> right. No, I genuinely, I think that my favorite movie does kind of change depending on which one I've seen the most recently. That's but fair. I do think that I have That's like a fair. top kind of top shelf of movies that mm-hmm. all of them kind of compete against each other. Yeah. I think my answer, I'll usually just say Back to the Future. Nice. Um, because that has been one of my favorites for a long time. Honestly, I like it less popping it in these days just because I've seen it so many times. That's fair. Sure. And so it's like a little bit of the magic is gone. I still think it's perfect, you know? Yeah, right. And I don't get, really get a chance to introduce people to it. Right. So it's Who just kind of, it? I'll throw it on in the background yeah, at this point. Totally. Um, so I, you know, so I'll answer it that way. And then I'll be, I'll usually say, but it's just because it's such a it's so perfect in every way you know the music the acting just the the parallel shots and stuff and so i could i could come across a little film bro yeah in the way of like justifying my answer a little bit too much sure but uh, i think the movie itself is not a very film bro movie to say as your I favorite don't, movie. i don't think so right now it's a little too popular it's yeah, not very it's, it's too mainstream pretentious though. it's yeah, very it made, it made too much money yeah, time travel actually doesn't really like work like that though. Yeah, like have yeah. you seen have you seen Looper? Because Looper is <laughs> kind of more how time travel would actually yeah, work. Yeah, yeah. It's I'm, cool because they haven't invented time travel yet, but it is in the future. He's just quoting the trailer for the movie. <laughs> the tagline. Because he hasn't actually seen it either. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, my my answer is always Lord of the Rings, and then specifically Return of the King. I'll just say Lord of the Rings, all three. I love them, but if I if I have to choose one, it's Return of the King, and um, that is my answer. That is that is the truth as well. It's the, it's truth. the truth. Yeah. yeah. I, well, you are a film bro for sure. Like, yeah. We don't need to find out. <laughs> so anything that you say this episode doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Raise your hand if you went to Sundance. Well, I guess technically all well, three we, of us Well, yeah, technically all did. But <laughs> Get, raise your hand if you paid like, fifty dollars in Park City to go to Sundance. For parking. For parking. For parking. <laughs> for parking only. Multiple times? And only once. Oh, once. It's the other time I day. split it. So. Oh. Oh. So you played, paid $75 yeah. on parking. <laughs> um, that day it was only Dude, $40. Dude, that's an amusement park, bro. So $70 <laughs> for parking, not $75. Uh, no, not yeah, an amusement I don't... park in Utah. Lagoon is $100. Thank you very much. Yeah, whatever. And Steven that... Soderbergh isn't at Lagoon hanging yeah, out. And so now that you said that, not especially anything that you say <laughs> will not count in your favor of I, not being a favorite. I hope bro. Roan still Steven listens. Soderbergh isn't at Lagoon. You have sealed your fate as a film, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Lord of the Rings, Return of the King. There, there are um, plenty of movies that I love equally probably and as much as or maybe even more probably not more but you know the godfather is legitimately another one of my favorites yeah no. um and i think this transitions pretty well into jared's question me bringing wait wait, wait. These, i want to note something my really favorites, quick but Niall, go ahead with lord of the rings what you do have going in your favor i is is that you call it lord of the rings return of the king when you could be calling it the Lord of the Rings. Just by including the the, I feel like that's something that a film bro would do. By, by omission of the article at the beginning. By omission of the, of the you come across as a man of the people. Mm. <laughs> I love Lord of the Rings. Yeah, Ooh. I never really say the Lord of the Rings. I think yeah. I do say the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Mm, red flag. Because, sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've maybe never it is. I'm conscious of that until I don't know that's well, <laughs> I probably Because I've been reading The Lord of the Rings. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, that's sure. what I'll say. I'm not saying I'm reading Lord of the Rings. It's I'm reading The Lord of the Rings. But you'll say, oh, we're going to watch Lord of the Rings. No, I think I'd say we're going to watch The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Oh, no. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> We have a, we have a Lord of the Rings episode. Yeah, we could go see, back. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. We can to go say back and we can see, episode. we can see what we said. Yeah. I think that episode yeah. is just called Lord of the Rings. I don't think it's called the Lord of the Rings, but it could be. Probably. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, maybe I'll go back and see because, in my mind, 
it's the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Because the Lord of the Rings is Sauron, of course. Of course, right. yeah. Sauron. So the book yeah. might so as well be called Sauron, yeah. the Fellowship of the Ring. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, could be. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry because I interrupted Lucas's attempt to be Segway King. Not sorry, Segway Lucas. King. I could yeah. never take that title. I was trying to be Segway Beta Male. <laughs> Segway, Segway Zeta. Se- yeah. <laughs> Segway Male, I guess. Um, yeah. Segway Sigma. That's what you could be. Segway. Ooh, oh, nice. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Saying the Lord of the Rings is one of my red flags. <laughs> but let's talk about more red flags. Oh, interesting. With, uh, Segway my, Sigma. my question. What are some either red flags or green flags you get when you ask people what their favorite movie is, right? Mm. So there are some of those movies where immediately when someone says, oh, this is my favorite movie, I'm like, ooh, you're one of those people. You know what I mean? And no offense if these are your favorite movies, usually they're great movies. Yeah. Yeah. But it's just something about saying it's your favorite. It makes it... Gives me a little bit of a... Yeah, just like a... (laughs) <laughs> At this point in the episode is when we're going to start ruffling some feathers. Yeah. <laughs> Certainly, if we haven't already. Yeah. So, I but apologize. by the end, we, we, we'll unruffle We still them. like you as a person. I have some great film bro friends. That totally. doesn't like. It doesn't mean that I won't be friends with them, but it will mean that I like them less. <laughs> <laughs> and it's nice because we have one thing in common. We like film. Yes. Yeah. To um, either the same extent or far different extents. A red flag for me is when they say the Godfather. Uh, Yeah. And I'll tell you why it's a red flag. Yeah. In my mind, what I think when somebody says Godfather is my favorite movie, my first thought is, I wonder if they've seen the Godfather. (laughs) (laughs) Because so funny to me. The Godfather is just an easy answer for someone to say. That's trying to sound like they fit in. And <laughs> I think that it's really easy to get by not having seen The Godfather and seem like you have. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is a good so. setup for my question later. Oh? Mm-hmm. No, no. Not quite the, there yet, though. <laughs> the not question is just, yet. thoughts on The Godfather? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, um, I, li- I really like, it's uh, it's just so, in like, the family dynamics are so impressive. And, um... The the horse head in the bed. That scene is <laughs> the crazy. horse and the wedding. The wedding scene crazy. isn't nearly long enough. Yeah. Did you know that yeah. Marlon Brando had cotton in his lips to make his lips do that? Yeah. Wow. Um, crazy. See, I I, I have an answer. I have a few answers uh, for red yeah. flags at least. Um, I've got. Yeah, I've got a couple as well. Cool. Um, red flag movies that I think it depends on the individual. If I don't know them totally. at all, then I'm going to be a little bit apprehensive if they say these. But if I know them and we're, like, engaged in conversation about movies, and then I'm like, oh, hey, like, what are some of your favorites? That is a totally different context than out of nowhere totally. saying a movie like The Lord of the Rings or a movie like The Godfather or Star Wars or any Christopher Nolan movie, but especially The Dark Knight. I think The Dark Knight <laughs> is the main one where if you go up to someone and say, hey, what's your favorite movie? And they say The Dark Knight, it's just like... Okay. Uh, I don't know, man. Interesting. I don't know. I don't think Knight I agree sure with that the, one. Yeah. The perfect example of just like, I don't know. It's just like, and maybe part of that is because it's just been so made fun of for being the pinnacle 25 year old sure. white guy's favorite movie, and it's always yeah. accurate. I mean, I love The Dark Knight. Of course, I love The Dark Knight. Yeah. And so it's like. It's hard if someone says that as their favorite movie, like their number one favorite movie, because it's like, uh, I don't know, I, I love it, but if that's the one you're yeah. saying, it's hard, because then, yeah. then it could transition into the like, oh yeah, I love you know Christopher Nolan, he's the only good director making movies today. Like That could <laughs> branch off into many other things. However, sure. if I'm talking to someone, and I'm like, oh yeah, what are some of your favorite movies? Like, oh man, I just, I, I love The Dark Knight. I'm like, yeah, cool, totally, I love The Dark Knight too. Um, yeah. and also those are the movies that I have in my top four on letterbox. Like, so it's like, I yeah, recognize yeah. that those are the movies that everyone <laughs> loves, especially yeah, every 25 but... year old white guy. Like that's not, I'm not unique in loving those movies and having them in my top favorite movies of all time. Yeah. But yeah. 
it can start like I don't always love talking to like the huge Star Wars nerds or the huge Tolkien heads where it's like, look, I, I love these movies, but I don't have to know the lore behind every single piece of stuff. Yeah. I know probably yeah. more than your average individual, but I don't know what Order 65 was or <laughs> why Sauron's depiction in his physical form was a poor representation of what Tolkien yeah. would have intended. Like stuff like that. Yeah, I don't care. I, I just like the product that I was given and yeah. I, I, that, that's that. So. Yeah. Um, I'll say for the dark Knight thing, I think there's a context in which I agree with you. Yeah. Totally. Which is and not always, if obviously. I'm hanging out with friends and we're talking about our favorite superhero movies, and we're kind of talking like, oh, dude, Iron Man was like a game changer. And like the kind of talking about things like that, M- mainly the MCU. If we're talking about Marvel movies that we like and then somebody offers up on their own volition. Uh, my favorite superhero movie is The Dark Knight. Yeah. That's where I'm like, OK, dude. Yeah, we get it. Yeah, we but know. That's, that's the like Dark the, Knight. the best. Movie. Obviously, sure. that yeah, doesn't make yeah, yeah. you interesting to say. Yeah. <laughs> like, and that, that's kind of what I mean. It's just like I feel like the context, yeah. especially in bringing up the Dark Knight, it's just like, dude. Context for a lot of. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, totally. For any movie, I, I'll accept yeah. any movie from anyone if the context is right. It's like, oh, cool, great. I don't care. Well, if the context is right and you can tell they're being genuine, yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally, I think totally. for a lot of people, maybe it's their favorite movie because they watched it with their dad for the first time. That was a yeah, long time ago. Good. You know what I mean? And that's a good, just a good memory for them or something yeah. like that. I totally understand that. I feel like The Dark Knight, in in my opinion, I is an acceptable answer because I'm like, yeah, that is a five-star movie, oh, totally. 100%. Now, this is my hot take. I don't really like Interstellar that much. Interesting. Now, I haven't seen it in a while, but I think when people say that's their favorite movie, I don't quite understand that yeah. because I didn't love it. Like I thought it was cool, but I don't. I wasn't like crazy impacted by it. And so then I'm just like, I think you're just kind of, I think you're just kind of being one of those people. Yeah. I yeah. don't think that's actually your favorite movie. Oh, I think that's just a popular choice. I'll ask you know? this then in response to that. How long has it been since you've yeah. seen it? And how many times have you seen Theaters. it? Theaters. Okay, Once. so it's 10 years, basically. Mm. Yeah. I yeah. was in a somewhat similar boat the, ver- the very first time. Well, I, I, I actually, no. I wasn't in the same boat with Interstellar. The first time I watched it, I loved yeah. it. However, I didn't fully get it. Upon rewatch this last year, I was like... It's not my favorite Nolan movie, but I think it's his best. I, I genuinely think oh, okay. it's his best. Oh, interesting. Wow. I think it's his best movie. Wow. Um, I think it is just so well made. I love it so much. It's so engaging. I kind of threw it on as I was doing something else. And then after a few minutes, I was like, that was what I was doing for the next three hours. Like, yeah. that just became my... <laughs> totally and then I was yeah. like, huh, I guess I just watched Interstellar today. <laughs> um, yeah. But it, it really is great. And... Yeah, but I, I, I definitely, same thing, context of like, if saying Interstellar is your favorite and then the, your rationale behind it is like, uh, but I, yeah. with, with what you were saying too, with like rewatching Back to the Future and not loving it quite as much, I will say, I kind of got that last time I watched Napoleon Dynamite prior to our most recent rewatch together. And I think sometimes oh, nice. just yeah. giving some time to kind of be like, man, I, I, I want to rewatch this movie instead of just like, well, I might as well throw on this movie because I love it. Like yeah. it had been three years since I'd seen Napoleon Dynamite. You know, people change a lot in three years, no matter what you're doing. And so I think re like bringing back a movie like that into your into your current world context is really fun. And like especially yeah. with a, a movie like Napoleon Dynamite, for example, which was so fun to rewatch. Yeah, totally. Um, I have one more red flag answer. Well, I'll do my other one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you have... One. Okay, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Because that even, was just my... I didn't even realize that wasn't the main one. Cool. No, my main one is Fight Club. That, <laughs> get out of here with that. Totally. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here with that. Totally. Yeah. That is Fight a movie Club that is has... a good movie. Yeah. yeah. Bless, don't get me wrong. It's a good uh-huh. movie. On the first watch. Yep. <laughs> I think it's one of those movies where... Yeah, the more I've watched it, the more I'm just like... Yeah, come on. I mean, it's, the it's most all right. diminishing returns I've ever experienced with a movie. <laughs> that uh, that was like yeah. the movie of the late, like early 2000s. That yeah. that was the sure. film bro yeah. movie. Like if we were living if this was 2002, we would be talking about Fight Club and how that was the movie. That that was yeah. It was worse than Dark Knight because it was like the film bros attached to it and then they like it, and it almost created a weird like masculine 
Pops craze during that time. Yeah. It had a very unique yeah. effect, I think, on men who watched Fight Well, Fight then Club, the, the pretentious level of, as always. like, Edward Norton's character doesn't have a name. And it's just, like, there's this level of, like, pretentiousness that, like, yeah. in the context of the story, actually pretty cool. Like, that's, I don't think that that's yeah. something to count against the movie. However, it's something that film bros just latch on to like leeches yeah. like oh there's mm-hmm. there's he doesn't have a name like do you know do you realize what that means on a psychological <laughs> level and you're like dude cool yeah. it like yeah. we get it yeah i think typically with the movies that i personally think are kind of red flags are the ones that are mainstream enough for people to watch it and kind of deep enough or like creative enough in a way where if that's the only movie you've seen that really does take the creativity up a notch, yeah. then it is perfect yeah. <laughs> and flawless and amazing. But if you've like watched a lot of movies, you would know that that's, you know, kind of one of many. Uh, yeah. One of many. And that one is not necessarily special because of it, but the film bro answer is yeah. it's, it's that movie because that's mm-hmm. the one we've seen. It's very hard you to take I mean? someone seriously after they say fight club is their favorite movie. I, yeah. I will say I, I like yeah, Fight I, I, yeah, yeah, I love Fight Club. I, I actually really love... I mean, I love Fincher, and it's yeah. his style very much so, and so I, I really enjoy yeah. it. But saying it as your favorite movie is kind of like... <laughs> it, it's similar to, like, yeah. to Drive, where it's like... Oh, Drive's Drive, I think, a is a one. good one. Where it's <laughs> yeah, like, sure. typically, people like Drive a lot. They only say it's their favorite if they're like, I like Drive because Ryan Gosling is me. It's never just, yeah, right, Drive yeah. is my favorite movie, <laughs> let's move on. It's Drive is my favorite movie, period. Ryan Gosling is me, period. Let's talk more about how I'm Ryan Gosling and Drive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. So It's also one of those answers where you're like, Drive is my favorite movie. Wait, you mean you haven't heard of it? Wait, what do you mean Drive you haven't 2011. seen it? Oh, yeah. you've got to see it. It's yeah, so Ryan good, Gosling, you know. And directed and, by Nicholas Wendy Refn. Yeah. yeah and that, that doesn't surprise <laughs> yeah. me. I haven't heard of it. Yeah. Um, so, that's a great answer. You had another answer. submission. Yeah, yeah let's, let's I had another it. submission. This is one that I don't know if it counts because I've never heard someone say this. But, <laughs> but if, if but I if they were did. to hear someone say this, I would not believe them. Like it's such just like a <laughs> the movie equivalent of a buzzword to say for like being a film bro. Yeah. Yeah. If I asked someone, what's your favorite movie? And they said a clockwork orange. <laughs> Uh, there's no way that is any person's favorite movie. Yeah, it's along the lines of like Citizen Kane. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, totally. Were like, you around in the fifties? Yeah. Is that why it's your favorite? It's like, are you whatever? an absolute psychopath? Do you not like enjoying movies? Yeah. Like yeah. what? <laughs> it's just again, good movies. Yeah, yeah, bad I, answers. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's the case for a lot of Kubrick movie. I, I really have come to like Kubrick the more I watch him, which is typically the case of people that I originally didn't like as much. I, um, now it's like how the more that you hang out with me, you actually kind of seem like you like me now. kind of a bit. Don't read it. Yeah. I wouldn't uh, take that too seriously, (laughs) but I I think most movies, most Kubrick movies that people bring up as their favorites. I'm like, is it like, is is, is uh, Full Metal Jacket really you sure your about favorite? That? Like, <laughs> I hope I, hope I like not. Full Metal Jacket Are you a sure lot. About that? I like, you know, yeah, The Shining. The Shi- I, I love The Shining. I think The Shining is probably the most mainstream of his movies. That's a pretty acceptable movie to say is your favorite. I would say because it's not that film bro in the way that it's made. Like it's a little bit abstract, but it's just like a cool horror movie. Mm. Well, can can we flip the script a little bit? Maybe to be just a little bit more positive. And kind of give some green flags. Oh, yeah, let's hear the uh, film enthusiasts, right? Maybe guys who like film uh, would say these movies, and you would be like, oh. You'd be like, okay. hey. You know what I mean? Like, it could be taken as pretentious, maybe, but it's, it's not. not. It's you know just, what I mean? it's jam- just kind very of earnest. Yeah. Like, it's also movies that we all like that are good picks. You know what I mean? Still, um, probably those same, a little bit of obscure, maybe, or. I don't know. We'll see. I want to hear yeah. your answers. Take it um, how you will. If anybody said anything about the Cornetto trilogy to me, immediate green flag. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, yeah, that's good. 
and if they refer to it as the Cornetto trilogy, especially because I know there are some people who have seen like Shaun of the Dead and they don't know that it's like a part of a greater whole, you know, yeah. and not to say that it doesn't stand on its own. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of themes yeah. and, you know, different things like that. Ooh. And so <laughs> I think that it is also, that is just totally me giving that to someone because those are movies that I love, sure. yeah. you know? Well, can and, I, can I ask what about baby driver? Baby driver. Also, I, I say Edgar Wright is a pretty homey one. Yeah. Edgar Wright is a green flag director <laughs> um, okay. for me. Baby okay. driver, baby driver, however, was more U S mainstream. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, totally. And as a result, there are some, you know, kind of backwards hat, snapback, <laughs> soul patch guys that like um, <laughs> Baby Driver. And so for me, it's like, if you say Baby Driver, that's a green flag. But it also could be said by someone who I have already determined that I don't like. Yeah. True. You know totally, I mean? yeah, totally. And then, and then at that like, point, oh, it's like you like a movie I like. I yeah. Well, even yeah. then, for me, it's less. Oh, you like a movie I like, and it's more. Okay, I don't like this person, and I'm not gonna want to hang out with them ever. But for this conversation, there's some common ground we can talk about. You know, yeah. kind of like something positive. Like, but yeah, I think the people that I don't like that like Baby Driver, I will know that I don't like them before the topic comes up. Yeah, that's fair. So I don't yeah. need red or green flags anymore. <laughs> that way, that which was... is very judgmental and like prejudicial of me. Yeah. But, <laughs> sure. uh, but that's um, what we're all about, baby, here on <laughs> Film Bro Movie Night. Film, Film Bro, Bro Cave Movie, movie Night. Night. We could make a secondary podcast, by the way. I just had this thought, and I want to say it before I forget it. If we ever make a podcast that just about like, like popular like blockbusters, and that's the only thing we talk about, we mm -hmm. could call it mainstream movie night. Oh, it could be like nice. a side, oh, like an offshoot. Wow. About mainstream, like, yeah, like cool movies like Transformer and GI Joe versus Transformer <laughs> and Godzilla and Transformers One. Yeah, and Transformers One. Godzilla versus Transformer. I, that would be sweet. Be here's a, here's a green flag. <laughs> well, we got Pacific Rim. That's basically it. Yeah. That's true. Here, here's that's a few true. green flags, I guess. Um, I think anyone who has a Coen Brothers movie, like it, is oh, pretty yeah. chill. Like, because mm -hmm. the Coen Brothers, they don't really make like pretentious stuff. Like, if someone said The Big Lebowski, I'd be like, dude, hell yeah, I love The Big yeah. Lebowski. Yeah. People mm -hmm. who are kind of film bros. <laughs> Haven't even watched a Coen Brothers movie, probably not. Probably not one of the funny ones. Yeah. They've probably seen No Country for Old Men, but they right. haven't seen Oh Brother Where Art Thou and The Big Lebowski. So I, I think a movie like that is like nice, bro. This guy's chill. If they say Inside Lewin Davis, yeah, very however, different. Yeah, the <laughs> that is uh, that's is that one where I'm flag? like, I, I like that. For one, me, it's a red flag. If that's the first Coen Brothers movie that they bring up, I like yeah. it. It's a good movie. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. However, kind of Fight Club energy. Though. That's one of those movies where if somebody said that to me, I would be like, oh, this is an educated film, bro. This is a film, bro, that has seen movies, yeah. and mm -hmm. also we don't. We're not gonna connect, <laughs> really. You know, like if that's the first Coen yeah. Brothers that they bring up, it's yeah. just like. Okay, get ready for this whirlwind of a conversation, you know? I don't yeah. know. Maybe that's a snap judgment by me. But... Maybe. I mean, in all of these, again, context. Context that's is everything. You like, we like Absolutely. a lot of these movies. Oh, yeah. All the ones Most we've of said them. I've loved. Yeah. Like, that's so it's a little bit hypocritical, <laughs> totally. but also, you know what we'd say as our favorite movie. Because um, we already yeah, told Yeah, I got them. Yeah. I think... Honestly, any for me, it's any movie that shows that they've seen a lot of movies and then they're picking one because it's genuinely their favorite. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anything that would f signal, oh man, yeah, I didn't, you know, I didn't think the so. Cornetto trilogy is a good mm -hmm. example. Like, oh wow, you, okay, you actually like have watched like Free a, Willy. A bunch of, <laughs> like, yeah, honestly, like, like something like that. Is, it's I like, think, oh, cool. That was going <laughs> yeah, that's rad. That's your favorite movie. Like, that is someone. <laughs> Who just has a you know general interest in movies, but not someone who's like yeah. studying them. Free Willy featuring Ben by Michael Jackson. Does that happen in Free Willy? <laughs> totally. Home? Yeah. Is there a second Free Willy? There's like six Free Willy movies. <laughs> That's sick. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Revenge yeah, of Free like, Willy. Like a movie like The Avengers. I yeah. mean, that's pretty mainstream. Yeah. 
But it's like, yeah, like that's probably your favorite movie. Yeah, it probably legitimately. That's a good is, one. Yeah. You got to be yeah. confident to say you that. You do have to be you confident. Gotta, yeah. You have to be pretty confident. You know. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of like more obscure ones, like uh, Braveheart. You know what I mean? Is that the best movie ever? I don't think so. But it can be your favorite. Yeah, I love that's, that's a, a great that's a good part. answer. Yeah. yeah. The um, I I think uh, in like animated movies typically as well. Like if you have like the Lego Movie or something like that as your favorite, yeah. Or like you know, Fantastic uh, Mr. yeah, Fox, Fantastic Mr. Maybe? Fox stuff like that. It's like typically film bros look down upon animation because it's not actually movies, which is a right. silly opinion. <laughs> True, <laughs> bro. And so, which is crazy because. They are actual movies. Despicable Me 4, only in theaters July 3rd. <laughs> I love how you posted that as a post on Instagram. It's important to me. <laughs> That's so funny. I'm very excited yeah. about Despicable Me, only in theater. Well, Despicable Me 4, only in theaters July 3rd. Yeah. Another green flag, Spider-Man 2. <laughs> I agree. Oh, yeah. Honestly, if they say Spider-Man yeah. 2, you know they're cool. They're like, yeah, oh, you yeah. know, they've seen a lot. And they know what's good. They know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just too it's good. Just too good. Yeah, I think generally, like, Ian has such good non-film bro takes. Like, whenever I see a, for the most, I mean, everything that I've seen that he's rated or watched, I'm like, like the fact that he, you know, his number one favorite movie is Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? And stuff like that. It's just like, yeah, this guy's yeah. just chill. Like, if I didn't know him yeah. and, he, and I saw his top four, I'd be like, cool. I, I'd get along with this guy. Yeah. You know that if you're hanging out and everybody's like, oh, let's watch a movie, and he suggests something, it's probably just going to be a movie that'll be fun to watch. Yeah, yeah. And that everybody will have a good time. It's not going to yeah. be... Shout out to Ian. Yeah, it's not going to be, let's, let's hunt these yeah. Sasquatch guys or whatever that movie was called. Yeah, shut up, dude. Did you hear that I added an addendum in the episode? No, I did not. But I in the episode that. that we posted, I added a little cut in where I said immediately after recording this. Well, you know, we'll talk about yeah, it later because people that are listening to this probably listen to that too. But <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, Lucas, would you please bring us home? Uh, oh, maybe a final our final look at at this topic, so we can finally decide if we're film, if bros. We're film bros or not. All right. So I, I'm I think, already leaning towards an answer, by the I, way. I think, on, on the, <laughs> me too. I, I think with being a film bro, one thing, one important factor that comes with that is pretending to see, pretending to have seen movies that you actually haven't. And I think that is something that a lot of people do, especially in context <laughs> of talking about movies. It's certainly something I've done and will do again. For example, Absolutely. even just in this episode, I didn't fess up to the fact that I still haven't finished Avatar The Last Airbender. So oh, there, what are, the yeah, there are plenty of examples. Well, you're about to have a great opportunity to watch it in live action, which I, is a great way to watch it for the first yes, time. Yes, exactly. I can't wait to for you that. Can borrow the Blu-ray. I could borrow the Blu-ray. I, I could watch it on Netflix. I've had season one downloaded on my phone for two years. I just haven't ever watched it. Um, but I've heard it's great. I know I'll love it. Um, it is great. You can also borrow this Blu-ray. Oh, Fight, Ooh, Fight Club. Club 10th Anniversary Edition? Nice. I will have to borrow that. I've never watched the 10th Anniversary Edition Blu-ray of Fight Club. Dude, it's so different. It's better. <laughs> it's better. Cool. Um, it's so different. <laughs> so, so that's my question. What's an example of a movie you haven't seen but have been in context? Or maybe you haven't been in context, but you've just been too ashamed to admit and have been praying that this context never comes up uh, a movie of of great significance in the film community that you you have never yeah. seen could be a tv show too but we're talking about movies so i've i've done a couple um also some in this episode i will not reveal the ones in this episode that i've what? done whoa no, come on i think it. it'll be i think it'll be fun for people to listen and wonder what it's i have not seen you that i've talked, talked about, about. <laughs> what that i uh no, you. Haven't I think there's him. been, or have you? I can't you remember. Seen the I, <laughs> I have not have seen, seen the Godfather. Godfather. Say, that's oh, that's that's what and I have on this podcast. I'm pretty sure said that I have seen the Godfather. Oh, really? That's hilarious. <laughs> um, maybe not in this episode, yeah, but, but before. Well, that's pretty funny. sure. Yeah. Um, it's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, it's like fine, I guess. And then I think there was one that one of you said that I pretended that I had seen. That yeah, we'll go mm-hmm. back and listen. And we'll see, but. <laughs> yeah. Um, another one is, I brought this one up, but I did not mention that I had seen it. I've done this before. Oh, actually, no, I'm not going to say that one. I'm going to say a different one. Now I have seen, but I grew up 
and and spent a lot of time saying that I had seen this movie when I hadn't, which was Pulp Fiction. Oh, nice. Um, uh, that's kind of yeah, why yeah. Yeah, we I made, we made a TikTok those, yeah. about it because I've had those conversations about uh, uh, multiple Tarantino movies. Most of them, actually. I've seen very few Tarantino movies, um, but I act, I just feel like as a film person, I need to have seen them. Also, to justify mm-hmm. the fact that I don't like Tarantino, I feel like I have to say oh, I've seen yeah, more I of see. his stuff. Well, <laughs> yeah, the, That's another example of a guy. The more I watch, the more I like him. So maybe it'll change. Oh, I just, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what matters. Yeah, I think especially know. if you have a, a, a strong opinion, you know, yeah. Yeah. then you really need to yeah. back it up. With, but that's the like, thing. That's is how like, I feel with the... Uh, <laughs> Freaking, what's his name? Scorsese. Scorsese. Yeah. yeah. Same boat for yeah. me as well. Which I'd only seen a few. The more, the more I've seen him, like I was like, I like yeah. him a lot. I really I like, like him. Yeah. Kubrick, though, I still am not huge on. Yeah. yeah. I think I think part of my I'm problem is that I, I saw two Tarantino movies and I disliked both of them. And so now I'm like, why would I spend more time watching well, his other stuff that people are like, movies. it's going to be so good. And I'm like, yeah, but here's the thing. The two that I've seen are also ones where everyone was like, it's so Wait, good. And seen? I'm like, glorious and pulp fiction, Inglorious bastards Bro. and pulp fiction. Yeah, and best. I dislike, <laughs> I dislike. Those are the best ones. My favorite. Yeah. Well, those are the dude. Django and chain is that, my Django is great. That one's awesome. Well. But those two are the ones that people renown as his favorite, as his best. Yeah. Totally. And I, I like kind of certainly it's been a long time since I've seen Inglorious Bastards, but uh, <laughs> Pulp Fiction I have seen within the last two years. And I would say that I f- like disliked it. Like, it's not that I was like, oh, it wasn't for me. I was like, I, I didn't enjoy watching Pulp Fiction. And so I'm like, I don't really feel a need to watch more of his stuff. So I don't know. That's where I'm at with Tarantino. Yeah. Cards on the table. Yeah. Now everyone listening to this knows I have not seen any of the other ones. <laughs> um, yeah, my answer is there's just a lot of those classics that I haven't seen, like The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, or The Godfather mm. Part Two. I, I only recently, like within the last year or so, watched The Godfather. And so, I mean, yeah, there's a guy who I work with uh, his name's Daniel. <laughs> Shout out Daniel. <laughs> Shout out to Daniel. Um, <laughs> he is one of the most like he's not pretentious about movies. He's just so informed about nice. them. Mm. And not even ones that have come out. He's like ones that date way back. He's like talk you'll hear him say a random actor's name and you're like, oh maybe I've heard mm-hmm. that actor before. And he'll list like 10 different movies that they're in that they're in that's rad and he'll tell you his opinions on all of them right wow and he talks to me very so often and guy. he'll say like oh yeah this like grace kelly like movie or whatever and oh gene it's a, i'm just gene kelly yeah no, grace kelly. gene hackman yeah yeah and i'm just like i'll just know yeah. <laughs> i'll be like oh, oh yeah, yeah man dude. and then he'll be like have you seen that one uh no i know about it yeah, i know yeah. about it <laughs> And a lot of the time, I'm just trying to keep yep. up because <laughs> I'm trying to place a face to the name. I don't know him. And so there's plenty of classics I haven't seen. I'm trying to think if there's like a more mainstream last 20 years that's so big that they I haven't seen haven't. yet. Like Parasite, I still need to watch. Uh, Parasite was pretty big. Parasite is great. Yeah, it's one little... of the biggest or most reviewed on Parasite. Or reviewed on Let- Letterboxd, most something watched, like that. I think. I'll tell you what I can get a pair of. Um, One thing I actually did want to bring up that I'm I'm glad you mentioned Parasite because um, typically like a film bro by the Urban Dictionary definition does not watch foreign films. And um, Parasite, Bong Joon-ho, when he accepted the award for Best Picture, he one of the things he said was, if people will overcome the one inch barrier that are subtitles, they will be opened up to an entire world of films that they've never seen before, which I just love right. that idea of Hardcore. the one inch barrier yeah, of subtitles in order to, you know, watch more films. I think absolute awesome. bars. <laughs> yeah. As he's <laughs> accepting bars. the Academy Award for best picture as a Korean, which I don't think it had previously happened before. I don't even think a foreign film had won up until that point. And it was 2019. It was like the 90th Oscar ceremony. So pretty, yeah, pretty rad. Nuts. Pretty rad. Um, 
If I'll, I'll answer while Jared is thinking of like a specific one. Um, yeah, I'm looking at my watch list. On nice. Letterboxd yeah. And it's if you search by most popular, that's seen. what I'm doing. Um, oh, nice. That way I can kind of know the ones that people would have expected me to have seen. Um, specific examples of times I have pretended like I have seen movies or just agreed with. And uh, specific examples of those movies. Requiem for a Dream. Lost in Translation. Um, Old Boy. Scarface. Eyes Wide Shut. All movies I have not seen. Wow. Also, Yikes. any David Lynch movie. I've never watched anything from David Lynch. He's incredibly... He's high on my watch list. I like. I want to watch all of his movies, and I want to watch Twin Peaks, but um, I haven't seen a single one of his movies, actually. As of... David Lynch this. is the one that did Boss Baby 2, Family Yeah, Business, he's right? the one who did the director's <laughs> cut. He was kind of that forced out, sense. but... Yeah. It's forced out, and then he finished it up, released it in black and white. I and heard. then, yeah, black yeah. and white, but it, only the blood was in color. Only the blood was in so, red. Yeah. Those are uh, yeah. a few examples. Real original idea, David. <laughs> yeah, come on, David. Go watch Schindler's List, another movie I haven't seen. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, Schindler's <laughs> List is like the perfect one because <laughs> that has been brought up, I, th- I think, a couple times. But it is hilarious that you'll pretend like you've seen it, but haven't. So those are, those are some <laughs> examples of ones I haven't seen. I'm sure there are plenty of other times where I've pretended like I've seen a movie in heaven, actually, but... Those are the ones that yeah. I know right at the top I'll, of the dome. I'll give you a couple more. American Psycho, haven't seen it, and it's oh. always talked about. And so Worth I'll just, I've seen the scenes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? The, at least yeah. some of them. I know the business uh, card stuff. I know card. the the <laughs> dancing to Huey Lewis. I know yeah. all that stuff. I know those it, are the, so I'm just Those are the two like main scenes it. to see anyway, <laughs> so it's um, fine. <clears throat> Taxi Driver is another big one I haven't seen. Um, or like Rambo. There's a lot of those yeah, ones like the, that have the classic, classic the Johnny Depp lizard people. movie. Yeah, Rambo. Oh yeah, <laughs> Rambo, the one with the with the lizard and the water and the desert. Yeah, gotcha. Fun. Stuff like that. But I've basically seen every other. Movie. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it's just hard when someone comes up to you and they assume you've seen. That's it, the thing. Like, I. When yeah, you're in I context know. of really want talking about a lot of movies and you're just kind of assuming and they're yeah. you're assuming they've seen things and Well, you've seen you've seen Rambo. Another thing that I want to tack on yeah, to this. Yeah, I've seen Rambo. I think it might actually not be that hard to tell when we're lying. Because I've been in many conversations with people where I can for sure tell that they, they have not seen the movie that we're oh, talking yeah. about. Oh, nice. And I don't call them yeah, out on like it because it's like, sure. there's nothing in that for me, <laughs> you know, except making me look like kind it's of like, not so wait, a chill dude. Just like getting up close to him. So what was your favorite part about it specifically? Yeah, what was your favorite <laughs> part? Name a scene. Who's your favorite actor? Part. Besides the obvious answers, what was your favorite yeah. part? <laughs> what? Just, uh, oh, uh, uh, well, like with the Godfather, scene. it's like okay. Well, now well, they can't yeah. say the the horse yeah, head. Exactly. They have to say anything to else say that happened in that movie. When Michael hides the gun in the toilet. Which yeah, maybe and it's like all right, cool. Part. And then I'll say, I assume that that's a part of the movie. But I haven't <laughs> seen it, so I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, what a conversation, boys. We did it. I we think talked from the beginning to the end. We did. I think we maybe we're all leaning a, a certain way, one or the other. I think. And I th- film bro to film bro and proud. Hashtag film bro and proud. No, I, I don't think we're. Bro. I don't think we're film bros yeah. by the modern definition. I think we're just bros who like film. We're we're film brothers. We're film brothers. <laughs> yeah, we're fil- film familia. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, I I majored in film, and my whole goal was to not be the pretentious guy who majored in film. Who would, whenever yeah. someone tried to talk about conversation in passing, was like, "Well, you know, I majored in film, so I know about, more about movies than you." Because Bruh, I'm always yeah. trying to talk about conversation. Yeah, me too. <laughs> the conversation is an excellent movie. Have you seen it now? No, I didn't think so. Anyway, let's move on. I, <laughs> no need. I have conversations oh, every day. Why do I need to watch a movie about it? <laughs> yeah, I think we've we've said a lot of bold things that are very film bro opinions. Yeah, of, of course. Or at oh. least like, yeah, very. Uh, yeah, I don't. I don't know if pretentious is the word. Maybe Sometimes it is. just judgmental. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for this episode, absolutely judgmental. Absolutely. For this episode, yeah. and you can we judge our taste. It's hard to say we're we not. We don't care. We're strong. It's enough. hard to say we're not. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just go with 
let's just go with yeah. Yeah, why not? Let's just we'll say film yeah. Bros. Hopefully we can rep the community in a positive way. <laughs> we're film bros, <laughs> but we're not as bad as the ones that you know. Yeah. We're the good ones. Be- because the there good is one. there is one other thing that all film bros have, which is just wildly sour opinions that they will defend to the death. And yeah, there's there's no hill I will. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But you know what I will defend to the death? My sweet mother, Carolyn Thorley. Oh, hey, Carolyn shout out to Thorley. Kel from uh, Jared. Carolyn is that enough? slash Kel. Is uh, it enough? That is that's good, but she's gonna need a little bit more. Hmm. Uh, fortunately, we have a couple of people who would love to give my mom an extra special shout out this week. Uh, shout out to Kel from Nick Bell, Michael Polonsic, Easy Lob, Britton Inkley, Riley Allen, Ian, James Martin, and Hannah Steed. Whoa. These are the people Crazy. who support us on Patreon. Com. And if you, listener, are not one of those people and you didn't hear your name, you could next week if you <laughs> went to our Patreon, patreon.com slash night, and just clicked support and then entered your card information. That's all you have to do. And then <laughs> One time every subscriber month, fee that will of $300, give. then only $3 per month after that. So great. After yeah. that, yeah, it's great. Um, yeah. What that does Honestly, is Honestly, if gives... you send me $300, I'll shout you out for the next 100 episodes. <laughs> oh, dude, I will drive to your home and kiss you on the mouth. Yeah, yeah. we're going to start a... Uh, an, no matter an, where you an... live next tier called the film film familia tier <laughs> where <laughs> you can give us bad takes we have to say on the yeah, episode and it's 300 dollars <laughs> oh, that would be <laughs> funny yeah it's an elite tier where people can just like write a sentence and we yeah, have to say, have to say it. <laughs> at some point in the episode but we have to make it sound like, like our words. <laughs> oh that's kind of that fun uh, <laughs> that would be that would be pretty fun we could do that and just say like with these restrictions, like don't make us say yeah, certain yeah, yeah, of slurs. Course, of course. Sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, maybe that, this, could, that could be. This is something fun. we'll we'll work Yeah, shop. totally. Yeah. In our post credits uh, episode, which uh, you could listen to but, if you were a Patreon subscriber. Yeah, we've got a post credits thing. So what what, what we do. your sponsorship, your supporting us on Patreon will get you, is a shout out to my Kel, my mother. Michael. My Kel, dude. That was cute. Um, <laughs> it's a shout out to my mom, uh, which is great. She needs it to survive. And then it also gets you access to bonus episodes that we record right after this, where we peel back the curtain a little bit and you get to see us just kind of chatting, goofing, gaffing, uh, doing anime voices, um, playing frame. <laughs> I don't know how much of a sell that is. By one single frame. No. Yeah, you f- you're definitely a film bro when we play frame. This is a film bro when it comes to framed, so you can see that for sure. Yeah. Um, Please, but uh, yeah. Go ahead and give us a five star rating and please, leave a little nice review. Please, please, send this please. episode to uh, any film bros and gals. Anyone you know. You know. Anyone, Anyone, even if they know, don't like movies. Just send it even to if them, they've never please. even seen a single movie except for Fight Club, please just still send it to them. That's Imagine right. if Fight Club is the only movie you had ever seen <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't like it. Maybe that was their like, I didn't like Fight Club, and that's the only movie I ever yeah. watched. So I didn't Are all watch. movies like this? I'm not watching like, another one of these. Anymore. That's right. They're not all like that. And not every episode is like this one of our podcast. Some of so them are go good. ahead and subscribe, and we'll see you on another Man Cave Movie Night Monday. Bazinga. Bye bye.